Hi, welcome to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane, and in today's class, we're going to take a look at how you can add assets like rocks, etc., to your landscape in Unreal Engine and not have it look like arse. Uh, and what I mean by that is get them to blend a little bit more believably than they would without this technique that I'm about to show you. So if we have a look on my screen, what we have here are two identical setups. So they're both very small landscapes with the exact same material applied and then two mega scans assets. And literally all I've done is this one was the original. I duplicated it over here and this is the one with what we have called runtime virtual texturing applied to it. And I want to just highlight what this does before I show you how to do it. So if we have a look um, here, let me just go right to this bit here. This is where these two assets join. And you can see that it's really noticeable that I've just stuck two together that don't really belong together. However, um, over here, this is exactly the same, remember? We don't have that same problem because this sand texture here is blending into the material used on the rock. And it's making a much more believable group of assets, really. So... Um, if we have a look at that, you can see that there are some differences that happen. So you've got this bit here, if you can see my uh, cursor on screen, um, that kind of really sticks out. But here, it's still there. It's there, but the colouring of it's changed, again, in order to get it to blend in better. So this is a really cool technique. And what I've done here is I've used Mega Scan stuff. So it's a Mega Scans um, material for the landscape. It's also a Mega Scans rock that I've got which also has the Megascans material on, which means the way that you can download them from Megascans is it comes as one mass material, and then you get lots of instances, which means if you set this up once, it'll pretty much work for everything in your level. So it's a really cool technique. Anyways, let's stop waffling, and we'll get into what you need to do to get this set up. So first thing that you need to do, and I actually fell foul of this. Uh, I spent about half an hour trying to work out why it wasn't working for me. We need to turn it on in the project settings. So the way that we do this is if we go to edit, project settings, and then this window pops up. And if you just search for virtual, and then there's a section here for virtual textures and enable virtual texture support, make sure that you tick that. Uh, so originally mine wasn't enabled and so it wasn't working. So that's step one. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll go to a fresh level so you can see me setting this up from scratch. So here's a level where I've just got this set up. So if we just do this really quickly. Um, so if we go for, I think it's called sand. Yep. So let's apply this sand material that I got from Megascans to the landscape. Lovely. And we need the rock that I also downloaded. Where's that? Here it is, the Thai beach rock. And we're just going to plop that there. And we're just going to get it so that it intersects. And actually, I'm going to go a little bit bigger as well, just so that we can see what we're doing. So we've now got these two meshes intersecting. That ought to do it. So you can see we've got these hard, ugly edges here, and that's what we need to work on. Okay, to do that then, we need to create two what are called runtime virtual textures. So if I just get rid of this search thing here, and we go into the content folder, which I believe I'm in. Yep, and you can see that I've already got two runtime virtual textures set up for the other level. So we're gonna set these up for this level as well to make sure this works. So what we'll do for that is just right click in here, go to textures, I'm going to create a runtime virtual texture. Okay, we're going to call one RVT underscore, and this one's going to be environment, environment, and I'm just going to put environment two so that I know this is the, the different one for me. So that's one of them set up, and then we're going to create another. So let's go in there, and RVT underscore height. Oh, height two, there we go. And then we need to open this height one up. So we just double click on it. And what we need to do is tell this that it is just the height one. So this little drop down box here, virtual texture content, you can see that there's one here for world height. So we just need to change that and then click on save. And then we can close this window on this tab rather. 
and that is our two RVT runtime virtual textures set up. Okay, the next step is to now create two runtime virtual texture volumes, and this works together with those textures to give us the effect that we want. And it also tells it where we are kind of sampling the texture from. In this case, it's gonna be the sand on the landscape. So we need to get that set up. So we're gonna click up here, which is the add button. And then I'm just gonna start typing runtime. And then you can see that it suggests runtime virtual texture volume. So we'll click on that. So now with that created, we can go into the details tab here and this is a little eyedropper tool. And we're just gonna click on that, which is pick actor from scene. And we're gonna select the landscape like so. And you can see landscape now appears here, which is what we want, uh, which means that the bounds align actor is that. And we also need to just tell it which one this is going to work for. So we'll go for the environment first. So RVT underscore environment. And now we can click on this set bounds button. And you'll see that now this volume has changed size to match the size of the landscape. Now we need to repeat this again. So let's go to here. We'll start typing runtime, create a new volume. We are going to select the landscape again. Then we are going to select the height. So RVT underscore height two and click on set bounds. So that's now starting to pull all this information together. Okay, with that done, now what we need to do is make some changes to our landscape material. So what we need to do for that is we're just gonna click on the landscape. And if we scroll down, we can see that the landscape material is here. I'll double click on this. And we can see it's an instance. So then I'm gonna double click here, which is this master surface that um, it gives us when we use mega scans. So this is kind of how it starts and we can just close that one there. Okay, so you can see what this does is comes out into a material attributes node. And we're just going to move that over a little bit, make some space. And then we need to just get these material attributes. So if we come out of result here and we go for get material attributes, awesome. And then we need to add a few channels to this. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And we want base color to be the first one. The next one we're going to have as specular. So I'm going to change that down here. And then we need a roughness. So we'll have roughness third. And the last one's going to be normal. Brilliant. Now we need somewhere to put this information. So we'll create a runtime virtual texture output. So if we just start typing that, runtime virtual texture output is here. And then we need to just plug these in. So we're going to get the base color. We'll go into base color. Specular will go into specular. And roughness will go into roughness. But we just need to change the normal from tangent space to world space. And if we just drag out of here and type transform, like so, and by default, it'll do what we need it to do. So it's going to be tangent space to world space, and then we can just put that into normal. And we will convert this back later, but for now, that's what we need to do. We also need to get the absolute world position. So if we start typing world position, create a new node there, and we need to mask this. So we're going to type component because it's a component mask like so. And what's important about this is that we do it on the blue channel. So it gives you RGB channels, but they can also be width, height and depth. So we're going to turn off the width and height and turn on the depth, which is the blue channel in this case. And we're going to plug that into our world height. And that prepares this material to pass on its information to whichever other material comes into contact with it. So we can now save that. Brilliant, that's all saved. And now we just need to go back into here, make sure that we select our landscape and we're gonna scroll down and we are looking for, where is it? The virtual texture section here, we're gonna to add two array elements. And now we need to add these two runtime virtual textures that we created. So in my case, it's going to be RVT underscore environment two and RVT underscore height two. For you, it will just be environment or height. And what's kind of important at this stage is that you're seeing these previews pop up. If you don't, it means you might not have it enabled, which was my issue. So make sure you can see something popping up here. Okay, now we've got that done. We just need to make some changes to the material for the rock. So let's click on that, find the material for it. Let's scroll up here. So here's the material, I'll just open that, scroll down and here's the default material. So this is different to the sand one. So we'll just turn that off. 
and we need to make some additions to this one as well. So you can see this one also comes into a material attributes node. So let's just move that over a little bit. And what we want it to do now is blend between this material, which is the rock, and the sand material based on an alpha, which is taking its information from the height of the assets in the level. So let's get that set up. So what we need again is world position. So let's get world position like so. And we need also a runtime virtual texture sample, which is this one here. Now we need to tell this one which sample we want. And just over here, and I'm going to choose the RVT underscore height 2. So this is what we're going to be basing our alpha on. So it's the height information that we really need here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is get a component mask. Component mask, which comes out of our world position. Make sure that this is working on the B channel because we're dealing with height. And what we want to do is get a subtract node. Like so. So this is our world position. And we're also going to take our world height from here. And we're going to subtract one from the other. And so if it is, I think the way it works is if it's a positive value, that means it's going to blend because it needs to blend. If it's a negative value, it won't because it doesn't need to blend. Okay, so that's coming together. What we also do, and I wish I could tell you why we do this, but we're going to get a divide node. And we are going to divide by 10. And we're doing this because when I learned how to do this, this is the way that they did it. One of the people that works for Epic Games that taught me this, so... I'm going with it because it's their method and it works. Right, so what we also need now is coming out of here, so this material here, we're going to blend material attributes. Lovely. I'm going to go from A to B. So all of these values here need to go into the alpha, like that. And we're going to have the result of this going into B and not into A. And the result of this is going to go into the material attribute there. And we're just going to kill that wire. So now we know what B is going to be, and we know what's going to drive that. It's this maths and stuff we've got going on here. What we need now is just something else to blend with it. And for now, what I'm going to do is just get a constant vector. And we're just going to set this to red. And this is just to make it easier to see. We'll change it for the proper material in a little while. Let's just set this to a nice strong red color. Now, you can't just plug this in because it's about blending material attributes. So we need to create a set material attributes node. We're going to add one. It's going to be base color. And that goes into base color. And we can now pass that through into A like so. So now we've got... This is our maths, and it's going to say, take the rock material and blend it with red based on the height. I have missed one node out, though, before we move on. So coming out of this divide, we just need to create a saturate node here. And that's going to then feed into the alpha. Okay, so now we can save this. And we'll go back into our level and see what we've got going on. So this is why we made it red so that you can see the effect that this material change is having. So you can see, here's our sand, here's our rock, and where the height between this and this is quite different, we are getting um, this blending through red, and it goes into the other material, which is brilliant. That's what we want. So now what we're going to do is just finish this off, and the job is, as they say, a good one. So let's go back into our rock material. And we're going to be making changes to what feeds into the A of the Blend Material Attributes node. So we're going to get rid of both of these. We need a runtime virtual texture sample. Like so. And this one is going to be not the height. It's going to be the environment. So this is going to bring in the environment texture, which in this case is our sand. So let's click on that. And we also need to create a set material attributes. And you can see that we don't yet have enough inputs for this. So we're going to add one, two, three, four. And we're just going to put them in the same order. So we've got base color first, followed by specular. And then we've got roughness. And finally, normal. And then we can pass the first one, 
two, three straight, straight through. So base color to base color, specular to specular, roughness to roughness. And if you remember, we have to convert our normal map again. So we'll get normal, we'll go to transform. And you can see it's still doing tangent space to world space. So I need to reverse that this time. So we're going to do world space to tangent. So we can change that over here in the bottom corner. So we're going to go world space to tangent space. Brilliant. And that is pretty much all we need to do. So we take the result of this, plug that into A, and we save. So the preview here is showing us that based on height, it is now blending between two different materials, but it doesn't give us the best preview here. So let's go back to our level. And you can see that now these are blending together really well. And what's good is that it's always based on the height and it's always happening at runtime. So if we make this lower, the blend will happen at a different height. So we can have these just sticking out and they'll still blend. Or we can go really quite a bit higher so that most of that other sand's popping out and it still blends. And that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. That's the technique. It means that basically any asset that you bring in can blend into your landscape in a much more realistic and believable way. And it just looks nicer. It's easier on the eyes. And that brings us to the end of the video. I decided to make this as a separate tutorial. I am currently in uh, research and development of quite a large Unreal Engine 5 tutorial series. If you want to see that, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, otherwise you're going to miss it. And it'd also be really helpful if you could support me on Patreon to give me the support to keep making tutorials like this. Anyways, that's me done. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.